I'm Joey Tedesco, and you're watching The Cartoon Palooza. So in regards to the new Powerpuff Girls series, I've been going online and noticing that a lot of people have been talking about it, but not in a good way. You see, a lot of criticism has focused on the show not being good as the original, so much so that it reminds people of Teen Titans Go! in regards to its original series. And yeah, I've seen most of the episodes to this new series. And from what I've had to see, I'll be honest with you, if you got problems with this, well, have you seen the original lately? Many of the things people don't like about this new series also appears in the earlier show. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't change my opinion that the show is one of Cartoon Network's best shows. This is coming from someone who has followed it back when it was on What A Cartoon, so as far as somebody who appreciates the Powerpuff Girls, take it from me. All I think is, after all this backlash the new series is getting, we might be remembering the original with rose-tinted glasses. While the show has plenty of subtlety and clever moments, themes, and innuendos, we tend to forget that it was still an age-appropriate cartoon show with outlandish, silly, and oftentimes stupid moments. And this is why I wanted to make this video, to maybe make people appreciate the new series a little bit and see that the original wasn't necessarily as good as everybody's making it out to be. So without further ado, here's the Cartoon Palooza's top 5 worst episodes of the Powerpuff Girls in its original run. Coming at number 5 is Moral Decay. I think the worst thing about this episode is that it doesn't make sense. When Buttercup accidentally knocks out Bubbles' tooth, she finds that the Tooth Fairy comes and brings his sister a coin. So the logical thing would be learning from the experience and moving on. Nope! She spends half the episode trying to knock Bubbles' teeth out. Yeah, you heard that part right. Buttercup is beating up Bubbles by bashing her teeth in. That's just a little too cruel and unexpected out of her character. I get it, she's the cruel one, but... She's beating up her sister for money. So Buttercup gets caught, and it isn't until she realized she can knock out the teeth of her enemies for coins. And that's it. This is supposed to be treated like some big deal, but they're criminals. They were destroying cities and robbing banks. Who cares if they lose a few teeth? But apparently, it is a big deal. And at the end of the episode, both Bubbles and Blossom set up Buttercup to have her teeth punched out by her enemies. Again. The sisters are letting each other beat each other up for a measly consequence. There were plenty of episodes that dealt with mean-spirited endings, but this episode ends up being too mean-spirited for its own good. I know there's a similar episode where Blossom gets her comeuppance for stealing, but at least in that episode, it deals with something a little more serious, like stealing. Here, it's just teeth. Who cares? Number 4 is Town and Out. This was an episode consistently showing up on a lot of fans' worst of lists, and I had to revisit it to see where they came from. In the episode, the Powerpuff Girls move to a new city, where the professor has a new job. However, the girls discover that the city functions differently than Townsville. They get made fun of, are easily ignored, and are discouraged from using their superpowers. I find it fascinating how a mayor, who was concerned with signing bills and maintaining a budget, wouldn't want to have superheroes help him out. But that's just me. The biggest problem with this episode is its tone. It was said that this episode was supposed to show how the characters would function with real world logic. They even include a bill to have these superpowers regulated, much like the comic Civil War in Watchmen. So that does sound like a nice gesture, except for one thing. This is the Powerpuff Girls. The show prides itself on nonsensical humor and the surreal. So when you're trying to take gritty realism and apply it to a show where your main characters are super powered test tube babies with no noses or fingers, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. That, and when you really get down to it, the episode could have ended a lot sooner. We find out that the professor has been faking how much he likes the city when he's been waiting for the girl's complaint first. Kind of a dick move when you consider for most of the episode he barely asked them how they feel about their new home. Don't you think that this would be one of the first things you ask? This episode feels drawn out, unfunny, and takes an interesting concept to a show that wouldn't really benefit from it the more you think about it. Number 3 is Fallen Arches. It's funny how this episode could have been a whole lot better since other shows have tackled a similar concept. The city of Townsville is attacked by a group of criminals from the 40s, who come out of retirement. The girls don't put them away, mostly because Blossom feels that she couldn't fight their elders. You know who else are your elders, Blossom? 
at least every other bad guy you've fought. Other than Princess, aren't all of the Powerpuff Girls villains at least 20 years older than they are? The mayor mentions a dynamic duo who can help them since they also fought the villains in the past. However, they are old and dysfunctional, and the whole episode revolves around making old jokes that have been done better in other shows. There are moments that remind me of The Incredibles where heroes are coming out of retirement. Honestly, <laughs> it made me wish I was watching that instead. I did mention this before, but other shows have done similar concept of new heroes fighting older ones, like in Batman the Animated Series and Kim Possible. In fact, this episode could have written itself when the heroes are modeled after Captain America and Bucky Barnes. One of my favorite episodes that work with this concept is Spongebob Squarepants, but in that situation the characters were the heroes to come out of retirement because they're fanboys. However, Blossom just needs them to do their job for them because of her backwards logic that they're disrespecting their elders. Remember, how old are most of your villains again? One of your villains is Satan, I'm pretty sure he was around since the Earth. It is such a waste of potential of a better idea that we never get to see these characters again in the series. I guess if you find old jokes funny, you might find some enjoyment, but all I see out of this episode is wasted potential. Number 2, Sweet and Sour. I don't think I really get this episode. It's one of those bad episodes that focus on one thing expecting you to laugh when it's not that funny. The girls find a new group of criminals who happen to be three cute animals. Every time the girls apprehend them or give them to the police, custody, the girls are mocked by the town folk. Mind you, it's one thing when they don't realize that they're being conned or swindled. However, throughout the episode, they're aware that they're being robbed and their biggest concern is that the girls want to put them away. You know, as they should be doing. Many times there are episodes where the townspeople don't know any better and they look up to the Powerpuff Girls as helping them get answers. It doesn't make sense when they know what they're doing is wrong and yet they consistently get mad at the heroes for doing the right thing. It's not funny and it doesn't make any sense. I guess you could say it's cool when you hear the original voices of the girls also play the criminals, but as far as being a part of the Powerpuff Girls rogues gallery, they aren't exactly memorable. They're just cute critters relying on their cuteness to get them what they want. That's it. The villains are lame, the plot makes no sense, and for a show that can get ridiculous, this episode is just flat out stupid. Number 1, Slumbering with the Enemy. So, this might not seem like the worst to most people, but it's pretty bad to me, and I'll tell you why. The basic premise to the episode, the girls are having a slumber party. Nope, that's not the worst part. They send out invitations, and one gets sent to Mojo Jojo. Nope, still not the worst part. He disguises himself as a girl, and everybody but the girls know it's him. Despite having all the power to take him in, they don't want to freak out their friends. Which is what happens eventually at the end of the episode. Uh-uh, that ain't even the worst part. You want to know what the worst part is? It's near the end of the episode, where they introduce Antidote X. If you didn't know what this is, this does the reverse effects of Chemical X, the formula that gives the Powerpuff Girls their powers. Mojo throws the antidote on the girls when they don't expect it, and then they lose their powers. Wait, what? The girls lose their powers? Do they ever get them back? Well, according to this episode, we don't know. All we know is that once Mojo Jojo reveals his identity, the girls at the party, mind you, four to five year old girls, defeat Mojo Jojo through a pillow fight. Three things. How come Mojo Jojo needs access to the lab to get the antidote? Haven't we seen episodes where Mojo constructs Chemical X through toilet water? So how is it difficult to find the opposite? Second point, I know the show's trying to empower younger girls by giving us role models that they can look up to, so I can see why having little girls defeat Mojo was trying to do. It's just lame. We watch the Powerpuff Girls see the girls kick butt, and not these snot-nosed little brats. And number three, there's an antidote X that takes away the girl's powers used at the very end of this episode! Why isn't that treated importantly? This should be like the equivalent of Kryptonite, and it's used for a minor plot convenience. I remember freaking out as a kid since I had no idea if the Powerpuff Girls would regain their powers. Now, obviously they do, but that's besides the point. Something as major and something that can take away the girl's abilities seems like a big deal, and huge potential for the episodes in this series. You know how many times they bring this up? Three times. They bring it up three times. Within six seasons, one movie, and a couple TV specials, they bring it up three times. This episode left me feeling disappointed, dumbstruck, and annoyed. And this was besides seeing the girls spend most of the episode doing slumber party jokes. 
It's an episode that makes me think of the worst that this show can pull off. So the original show has been out for around six seasons, so there's bound to be other bad moments that I didn't mention below. So with that said, is the show bad? No, I'm just saying that it's not perfect. I guess that's why I look at this new reboot, it has similar moments of disappointment, but otherwise good moments that stay in tone to the original show. And that's what it comes down to. Unlike Teen Titans Go, the new series has the same tone as the original. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and when it does have a serious moment, it isn't too condescending. Much like Scooby-Doo, there will be different variations of the same characters for different audiences. They can still appreciate the same characters with slight changes. And this is why for my question of the day, I want you to revisit the original series. Go back and see an episode that really bothers you. Let me know what it is in the comments below. I'm Joey Tedesco, and thanks for watching this countdown on the Cartoon Palooza.